There was a couple in 2014 whose husband had a bad stomach and he was complaining with frequent stomach aches. So on January 1, he decided to go to Google and search for frequent stomach aches and how to cure it and the cause and this and get some advice on that. And he finds many hit and he did his own research. Then he talked to many friends. You know, we all have friends around us and uh, the friends were giving him as, as many friends as many advice. Don't drink this, don't drink that, eat this, you should do like this, you know, and all of this. And if you want to ask Pastor Jennifer, she is very good at that. She's an expert. If you have any uh, sickness or disease, she has a cure for you. So just talk to, to her. And apparently she's very good. She says, she says, yeah. And anyway, and then his wife told him, why don't you go and see a professional, a health professional? So he went to see the doctor. The doctor referred him to a, a gastroenterologist. This is a physician who specializes in the gastrointestinal system. So my question to you as we begin this new year, and this couple are, are facing all of these options, what do you think is the wisest way to begin the new year? The many friends advice? the Google search on your own, or the specialist, the gastroenterologist advice? Which one is the best one? Maybe the gastroenterologist. Maybe the gastroenterologist, yes. So this is exactly what we are doing today here by turning to the great physician, the great doctor and his truth this morning to tell us what's wrong with us. Is there anything wrong with you this morning? You look all look healthy to me, and you look all handsome and beautiful and all of this and peaceful. Is there anything wrong with you today? Let's find out what God has to say on this. Maybe God sees something you haven't seen because you're still searching on Google and assessing uh, yourself. Hallelujah. And my title today is Live Without Regret. And this is what we, we are willing to do this morning, and that's what we are seeking after this morning. We want this year to be the best year. Amen? Amen. A year, no regret. How many, if you would have to live 2014 again, you would probably change a few things. Yes, we all have some, pro, some regret in our lives. So, let's read Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. If you know the context of Roman, uh, you will find that in chapter 1, there is the proof of the condemnations of all unbelievers. There is no excuse People have sinned, have walked away from God. Then in chapter 2, we talk about religious, moral people, like the Jewish people, who like to compare themselves and point to other people and see, look, these people, they commit this kind of sin. Oh, how horrible these people are and everything. And the Bible is very clear. It says, do you think that you can judge those other people? You are wrong. You too are guilty of sin. You judge them, but you do the same things. They do. So when you judge them, you're really condemning yourself. So that's in Romans chapter 2. So then we come to this point, and then that's the conclusion of the previous sections. We have already proven that. We have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles are all under the power of sin. Amen? So, what's your problem? What's your problem, and what was your problem in 2014? And what is going to be your problem in 2015? Any idea? Sin. Sin. This is our problem, our universal problem. And this is what we are going to be struggling with in 2015. This is what we have been struggling with in 2014. And the, the, the sinful, of course, we have been us here, most of us, have already received Jesus Christ. Is that right? And uh, so we have been set free of sin. But have we lived a sinless life in 2014? 
No. So there's still a struggle. In Romans chapter 7, you have this old chapter about the, the law of sin and death that is still, you know, in operation in all of us. We still have Satan, the, the, the deceiver and the tempter, and we, you know, lure us into and to sin. We have our own flesh and everything. And chapter 8 of Romans tells us, like, if you live by the Spirit, you will overcome that. So we all, uh, we are always in a struggle between the old ways and the new way. Amen? So if you go a little bit further, if you want further proof, like Paul says, if you want further proof, besides that we have already charged that we are all under the power of sin, then Paul is going to read many portions of the Psalms. And you have it on the next slides. So let's read this, uh, this section here. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues proceed deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. What a negative picture is it? Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. R ruin and misery mark their ways. In the way of peace, they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And all of these quotations are listed below. They are from the Psalms. If you have time to take note of these and look at that, you will find even more a description. So what are, is this text about and what does it have to do with us in beginning a new year in 2015? This is actually a, a, a look of the human conditions. Okay, we have been saved in Jesus Christ. So we are received power to overcome these and already we have experienced so many change in our lives. I, I, sometimes I, I, I go back to what I was and what I would have become without Jesus Christ and I'm even scared to just think about it. I, maybe I would not even exist anymore. So God has done incredible things and many changes in, in all of our lives. But this is also a picture of what, if you agree with me, we tend to go back to. Because this is the, the, the basic human needs. This is the sinful nature that we have inherited and that we are struggling with. We have come out of it by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But as we walk away from God or as we neglect or the disciplines of the Christian life or as we become spiritual lazy or as we are being you know uh, without knowledge or awareness being lured into going back to the old ways we have this still the old the old man is still there the new man is there so we are being instructed to do certain things to 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 remove the old man and to take on the old man but this is is what we tend to go back to. So in 2015, if we are not careful, we will, you know, practice some of these things, maybe to a lesser degree. But this is the directions that we are aiming at. It's like we are swimming against the current. But this is, this is our life. We are walking against a current, and the current is going back there. And in 2015, if we are not uh, careful, and if we don't live in the right way, there will be regrets, because we will be plunging back into some of these uh, patterns of life. Do you agree with this? Or am I the only one that is struggling with that? I don't think so. So it's like, it's, this is like an X3. <laughs> This is like an x-ray studies. It's like the, the, the doctor God is, is examining the human nature and the human body and he is giving us. And if you notice, it starts from the head and it goes to the toes. Nothing is escaped the, the verdict of God. And God is really examining our body and our, and our nature and he's going back. And it makes us uncomfortable. Are you uncomfortable? You should be. I mean, I, I should be uncomfortable when I read that because God is speaking to us. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us. You know, we love to think of ourselves like we are so good, isn't it? And we love to compare to each other. Like, and we love to compare to worse than us because that makes us so much better. So God, God is, is not like that. God is so truthful and he tells us, the truth just like it is. This is what you are without me. 
and you can try to be good as much as you want and you can be religious as much as you want you can go to church you can practice any religion you cannot improve and that is why resolutions doesn't work and making resolution is also a proof that we agree with the verdict because we know I need to change something. I know I have uh, some shortcomings. I know I'm, I, I have developed some bad habits. I know I'm not really doing what I should do. So I'm making the decision that in 2015, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. And this is a proof. We acknowledge that this is the, the good verdict of the doctor God who is examining and x-ray, deep x-rays and the, uh, you know, the scans. We go in the machine and the scan. And this is how God is looking uh, at us. Amen? Hallelujah. This is an accurate portrait of our own human height. And also it is a proof that uh, we, we uh, are completely unable to save ourselves. If you look at the next slide, you will see the effect of the sinfulness or the fall of man in the Garden of Eden touches every part of man's being. And then it, all of the part, and you start with the inner part, okay, uh, is mind. No one understands God. We don't have the ability to understand God. And if you look at the Greek when it says no one understand, understand is a special word here that means uh, together with, like uh, 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 put together, like uh, we, because we are not walking with God or close enough to God, we don't understand. It's like a husband and a wife who never talk, never communicate. Then they will not come to go, go know together. They will not understand each other because they don't talk. They don't express each other. This is the same thing. Uh, you don't talk to God. You are not close to God. You will no, not be able to understand. The, so, so that's what it says. We cannot understand. There's no one who understands and there's no one who seeks God. Only the Holy Spirit can allow us and help us to seek God after the Lord. So the mind does not understand, has no way to understand the things of God, and it is expressed in other texts of the Bible, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, for instance, the heart, no one who seeks God. We're not seeking God. We cannot see God. And uh, I knew for myself, I was thinking about this verse, because sometimes we have the impression, that's not true, this one. We have been seeking God. We were seeking God. I knew I was seeking something, but actually I was not seeking with God. I was seeking something. I was seeking change. What, what, what are people seeking after? Is that seeking after God? They're not seeking after God. They are seeking after the removal of guilt. That's what people are saying. Be, be, you know, go back a little bit in your past, before Jesus came into your life, and even at this moment, but before. What were you looking for? You know, you knew you need to change. Your life was in a mess. Something was wrong. You were unhappy. You didn't have life meaning. You were not content or satisfied with life. So there was something missing. There was a vacuum in your life. Is that true? So you were seeking for that. You were seeking to fill that vacuum. Where did you seek? that vacuum. Some of us, we, we, we sought a boyfriend, a girlfriend, so I will be happy. Some others, we, we, we sought it in drugs. Some others in alcohol. Some others in uh, working, working, working. Some others at different places. Uh, we, we even read books on, uh, uh, you know, meditations, uh, yoga. Uh, we, we, we read different things, you know, like when I was uh, younger, uh, I, I met about any religions and cults that you can imagine. One time somebody gave me the Bhagavad Gita, like the, the Hindu Bible, the Sri, uh, Sri Lanka Bible, you know, the one that are like, do, 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 with their, the, you know, the, the white lines over their nose, you know, something like this. So I, I, I was traveling with my, my my in, uh, Sri Lankan, you know, Bible, like, uh, uh, I never read it. I, I, I actually, no, I tried to read it, but it was too abstract for me. I just couldn't understand it, so I just re let it go. But you seek, you seek anything but God. Because at that time, oh, I was so wise, like many of us in this room. I was so wise that I decided that 
I rejected God. You know, I rejected religion. I was so smart. I didn't need religion, so I was searching ser some other things. And many of us have done uh, the, the same thing. You know, uh, Bridget's uh, brother is a ski patrol. And, uh, you know, when you go on the very high uh, ski slopes, um, some s uh, skiers will be wandering off the track, falling in the bush, uh, falling down a cliff or something like that. Or they are trying to do dangerous things on the, you know, on the ski slope, and then they will need rescuing. So what do rescuers do when they find someone who has done something foolish? Do they come to them, ha, oh, you deserve that. <laughs> you disobeyed the rule of the ski company here, so you ignore the rule, so you have to bear the consequences. No, they are there to rescue, isn't it? So whether the, the, the people don't deserve to be rescued, a, a rescuer just rescue, is that right? Yeah, so that's what God is doing for us because we're not intelligent enough to seek God. God seeks us, but we don't seek God. We search other things. We search the removal of guilt. You know, if we want to be honest, there is a lot of regret in this world. There is a lot of regret in our past, in our homes, in our parents' lives, in our uncles, in our cousins, in our neighbors, in our churchmates, their people are filled with remorse and regrets that are just bringing weights over their life. So what are people seeking for? They are seeking for the removal of this uncomfortable feeling of regret, to the removal of a bad conscience. They are seeking for a start over. They are seeking for something that would repair the evil that they have done and the, the hurts that they have done to other people. So that's what people are seeking after. They're not seeking after God, they're seeking about repairing themselves. But God is the rescue, is the specialist and rescue mission. But people do not seek God. They will turn to any other things. Have you talked to people and they will tell you anything but God? They will find, they would rather try any, any other things. And verse 12, Instead, all have turned away. All have become uh, worthless. And in this text, you must pay attention to the all. Uh, that does not, you know, uh, excuse yourself. All, we are included in that. We become unprofitable or worthless. Or actually, the word means corrupt like a, rot a rotten fruit. That's what we, we become when we, the, the further you move away from God, the more corrupt you will eventually uh, become to be worthless. Jesus says it in a different way. Wh what good salt is if it loses its saltiness? And this is what happened to us. We lose our saltiness as soon as we walk away from God. We may like to think that we are good. But, you know, actually to be good, it's not a natural thing in our lives. Is that true? It's not natural to be good for us. We have to desire to be good. We, 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 we make an effort to be good. I want to be good. You know, you go to work and you have a, a very mean uh, colleague at work. It's not natural to be good to that person. It's not natural to be kind to that person. You just want to hit that person on the head or do something mean to them. You, you, you struggle. How many of you, like I live in a village in Fan Ling Wai, and there are dogs barking at the wrong time. How many of you have ever imagined an evil scheme of Thing, like what you could do to this dog or what you could do to even the owner of the dog you know like and then you realize oh no no I'm a Christian I must not entertain thoughts like this so this is not natural to be good we must make efforts and to to be good and because we have Jesus Christ of course the Holy Spirit help us but we tend even though we are you know I talk to Pastor Jennifer when she drives her car ask her if she's always good has a good feeling and everything. She will, if she, she will tell you how, how she feels sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 
we, we find you know, the result of that. So if you go to the next slide, we continue our x-ray of the human, the human nature, hallelujah. And now you find about human speech. It starts with the throats, the tongues, the lips, and the mouths. Wow, this is, wow. This is usually the first place where sin is expressed. That's why it's so easy. You are just like, nya, 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 nya. you know. We shout, we accuse, we mock, we laugh at people, we despise other people, we put down someone, we insult someone, we offend them, we remind them the past failures, we talk in their back, we express negative comments, we criticize. Uh, you want me to add to that list? We lie, we deceit, we boast that we are... Be, 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 uh, and, and this is only a small list. I didn't think a lot uh, to, just to write these things down. This is the first place that we sin. This is with our mouth. Hallelujah. How long does it take in the morning after you wake up and get out of bed before you speak your first negative ways that you first express a negative word or negative emotions it's not very long you know think about this maybe before the toast or in the toaster you've already done that <laughs> hallelujah and then you go to conduct the sinner's feet the sinner's feet to go on the deceitful ways and this is this is bad i, I was reading and uh, and uh, the the um Google uh, this week, he searched on Google for violence, murder, statistics this week. Wow, you will find a lot. And Chicago, just this last year, every three minutes and 19 seconds, someone is being shot. Every 19 minutes, someone is being murdered. That's something. In Hong Kong, in the next slide, you will see overall crime situation in 2014, crime situations in Hong Kong. Violent crime, 9,400. Serious assault that wounded people, 4,700. 54 rape, black male, almost 1,000. All thefts, 644. Should we continue the list? to prove that on the paths of human beings there's a lot of ruin and destructions and Israel, Palestine, the ISIS, ISIS, Iraq, North Korea. But let's come closer to home. How natural it is for young brothers and sisters to argue and fight, uh, for couples to fight over money, uh, to have come petitions and jealousy in the workplace. This is just the natural things. This is the daily life that is happening all the time. How many couples in this room don't raise your hands? You have argued over money in the last year. How long does it take us to sin after we wake up? Your first frustration, your first judgment of someone, your first critical comment or your first dark thought that you had after breakfast in the morning. How many minutes does it take? It comes so, so naturally. Bible says all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Falling short is something that we all do. If you train, who is the greatest athletes in this room here this morning? Uh, who can run the fastest? Maybe Jessing, I think, is must be very good. Or maybe Walali. Walali, should look, he's very athletic. Yeah, he can, he can run so fast. Okay. So let's say we have a team here, Tom and all of the others. They are, you know, training ourselves. And we want to jump from the Star Ferry to Central. <laughs> so... Tom goes first, and three feet down, the, the, the wharf is just pluck in the water. Then Walali is much better than, than Tom. He goes to six feet, double the distance on Tom. 
but it's still pluck in the water. Everybody is going to fall down on this, on this competition because it cannot be done, it cannot be achieved. So that is what we call falling short. We can try, some are better than others, we are better in, in morality and good deeds and everything, but we all fall short. You have been driving 30 years and you've never got a speeding ticket. Wow, this is, this is very unique because me at one point I almost all lost my points <laughs> when I was. So. Good things I live in Hong Kong so I can retrieve them every, every two years. Pastor Jennifer is boasting. She's <laughs> looking at me she says, I've never got a speeding ticket. <laughs> okay, let me ask a question to Pastor Jennifer. Okay, but that, that doesn't count. That's a speeding ticket. So, congratulations. <laughs> now, I'm going to get you now <laughs> by asking you the following question. Have you ever exceeded speed limit? Absolutely. Ah, you see. So, she never got a ticket, but she could have because she experienced. So, she may think that she is very best driver than all of us because she has not lost any points on her tickets and her, on her <laughs> permit. So, everyone is accountable before God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. God tells us the truth about our condition because he wants us to make it to heaven. Not only through 2015, but through a life. And not only a, a mediocre life, but a life without regret, a life of abundance, a life, you know, live in the spirit and grace and with a lot of good things happening in, in our lives. That's what shalom means. That's what uh, uh, prosperity means. Prosperity doesn't mean only money in your wallet. Money means a quality of life, a quality of life uh, in God, a, a life lived in peace, a life lived without regret. You sleep at night, you, you have love in your home, you, you, you do things right and you're happy about your, your life. So that's why God is so truthful. And it, it needs to disturb us. Because if I go to a doctor and nobody tells me I have a cancer, you know, sometimes I'm really, really wondering. I hear some people says, oh, uh, my father has a cancer. But we did not tell him. What's why? Why not tell someone he has a cancer? He's only got maybe a few months or that to, to live. He has a right to know. So maybe he wants to change something or say, oh no, we don't want to disturb him. You know, that, that's not the ways of God. If God can disturb you, he will disturb you. Because we need to be disturbed. We need to be told exactly what it is so that we cannot find the right remedy, the right solution, you know. If you want a great year in 2015, ask God. He will trouble you so that you will change the real things. Oh, not oh, I be blessed, make money, gongi fat soy, I be happy, you know, like this. No, no, that's not what God wants of you. He wants a total change because your problem is not about money, it's not about a lot of the worldly things. Your problem and my problem is a problem of sin. We are going back to that sinful nature. This is the struggle that we have. And we have an enemy, Satan, who is a specialist of stealing our peace and luring us back into that direction. So if we are not following the ways of God, if God doesn't shake us up, we're going to sleep our way through 2015. Nothing will change. And not only sleep through 2015, but sleep through our spiritual life and miss the goals and the objectives of God into our lives. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So here there is a prayer I just want to, to read here. Thank you, Almighty God, that you don't hide the truth from us. You showed us how completely sin has affected our lives in order to rescue us through your Son, Jesus, and show us just how much Jesus Christ has delivered us from. Thank you, God, that you did not hide the truth, that you are so direct to tell us the truth like it is the verdicts of our human conditions and what I need to change and what I'm really struggling with, that you love me enough to deal with my life and you have sent Jesus Christ to prove to me that I can be free and have a better life. Amen? All are justified freely by His grace through redemption. 
Redemption here is like a full ransom price. Jesus has paid for that to loosen, to set free. And that's what we have. We have received the privilege already to be loosened and set free from this ugly picture. We don't have to live there. We don't have to return there. We don't have to even think about it. We can live another life, a much better life that God has for us. But if we don't follow the ways of God, we tend to return there. That's where we are returning. We, we are f fully and forgiven, and we have the freedom of sin that is granted to, to all. So in closing, living without regret. The first thing to do, if we want to have a great year and a great life, is to get the right verdict of your condition so that you can obtain the right treatment. If you don't get the right uh, assessment, you will not get the right treatment. If you go to the gym, I've never been to the gym, but I hear from people going to the gym, <laughs> what happened? Maybe I should be going. Actually, I will be going. Yeah. The instructor, the instructor first assess your weight. He finds your fat, okay, that's easy. That's the first thing to find. The muscular mass, and then you will assign the right cardio, weight lifting, stretching, and diet. And then things will start to happen, okay? So the righteousness of God is also like that. The effect of the righteousness of God also produce these wonderful, positive, opposite characteristic to what we have seen. So we have seen a very negative picture of our human condition. So the righteousness of God takes this picture and reverse it on the other side around. Okay, so what was negative and not happening is starting to happen. And then you have it here. Look back to the body structures and to the order of what we have read. What happened when you have received the, the righteousness of God and you are forgiven and free of sin? That is what happened to you. Your mind. Understand the mind, the purpose in how to please God. That's a change. Before it says, no one understands God. Now you understand how to please God. You, 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 you have a connection with God. Your heart. You, you have desire that you didn't have. You know, the not seeking God is over. Now it is seeking God that we are doing, that we are practicing every day. We're seeking His will. We're seeking His companionship. And I, I, I was saying that the more you, you, you stray away from God, the more of the potential of sin will become obvious. It's proportional. You go away from God, and the, the, the character of God goes away also with that. You, your will, you will have the will and the power to do good. As we were describing all the parts of the body, the throat, the tongue, the lips, the mouth, the feet, the eyes, all of that now will become the instrument of God. God's righteousness, instrument at the service of God. Your speech, think of your speech and your conduct will glorify your Savior instead of all the negative lists that I was talking about before. Your feet will be swift not to hurt people and destroy someone. Your feet will be looking for, looking for opportunities to bless and to pray and to, you know, uh, encourage someone, to show mercy. And that's where mission comes, evangelism comes, showing mercy, giving money to uh, other people. Swift to, you, you find opportunity, you seek opportunity. It's just like a flow. It's the Holy Spirit producing that in our lives. So why not embrace the new year? with no resolution this year. You know, one of the verses that really touched my heart a few days ago, and I think I will ch choose it as, a, as my motto for the year, in John chapter 7, verse 38, the rivers of living water flowing. That's easy. It's, it's the rivers flowing. It's not me trying. It's not working. That's what this text is all about. It's not working. But let the, the Holy Spirit, the rivers of, just flow out every day. Just let Him flow out through you and use you. There are two things in this text that come out above anything else. You want a good year this year? Just very simple message. If you forget everything else I says, remember this thing. Seek God and fear God. 
If you practice just that every day and your lifestyle, you will have the greatest year. See God, His will will be imparted, His mind and all of this. Fear God will prevent a lot of things from negative to a happy. And you want a good year, want positive? Fear God, you stay away from trouble. You read Proverbs, that's what it says. Fear God, you stay away from trouble. Don't mix with the wrong things. Fear God, make the right choice. And seek God, so you will seek you will be creative, you will find that everything that is pleasing to God. Let the Holy Spirit bring in you the character of Christ. I want to finish with a comment on the peace of God quickly. Because that is, as I said, what you and I need in our families, at work, in our individual lives, in our church and everything. And I read a text that is so wonderful because it explained it so well. Peace of God is a state of living that should characterize our life on earth and beyond into eternity. It is so far more than just having a great day. Peace is not just the absence of frustration, anxiety, or turbulence. It's the life the way God designed it to be. It is a peace of heaven, the place of no tears, the place where shalom rules. Shalom is a completeness of our total person. The trouble is that someone else is working 24-7, the devil, to take this peace out of our mind. Anything that God treasures for his people, the devil tries to rip off. Our whole life can be thrown out of balance by the lack of peace. That is what he wants. But God wants us to enjoy this kind of blessing here on earth. He has promised us peace. And still we frequently pray or ask for other things. More money, uh, promotions, uh, healing, uh, problem solve, uh, this, that, and this, that. But peace is so much more than getting a raise, uh, finding a more attractive boyfriend or girlfriend, or going on a vacation in the south of France. It is that deep sense that God is in charge of my life and He is working out the best for me. Whether I understand it at the moment or not, He is saying, I want to be with you at all times because I love you. No matter where you are, and what is going wrong in your circumstances, I will lead you in the path of my peace. And that is what God wants for us in 2015 and for every day, as it says here, for our life on earth and beyond into eternity. And that's why God gives us this so drastic verdict about our condition so that He can offer His more drastic solution, the unique solution through faith in Jesus Christ, through redemption paid for us. We can have all this package for this year, and it's not out of our effort. It's no resolution done. It's just the flow of his life, the result of living with that faith. Amen? Amen. Let us stand and rejoice in what God has provided for us for this year. Seek God and fear God and live without regret. Hallelujah, hallelujah.